I'm going to put the structure back in again. Oh. I use my understanding of the measures for tailoring, what I call my, call the, my eye as a designer, oh. and I fused the two together. Oh. And I came out with a very distinct cut that you could come to my store and buy off the peg. It's and very interesting that you should say that, and we should start this conversation on Giorgio Armani, because now Giorgio Armani, the pendulum swung completely. He's come into the structured bespoke look. Right. So in, in some ways, you've been influenced and, and admired Giorgio Armani, but he's now come right back and following what Savile Row is doing. Well, well, this is exactly it. And then when I did that fashion show in 1994, that's what it did. It redefined that. It kind of went, oh, tenor can be fashionable. I mean, fashion is... Uh, seems so temporary, right? And then yet, tailoring seems permanent. So I think, yeah, and I think that's one of the things that uh, I've balanced over the years, is that, you know, you know the, being very aware of fashion, but not totally entrenched in it. So after meeting uh, Andrew Ramru, you took us to Paris to meet Susie Menkes. Why was it important for us to meet her? Oh, I wanted us to meet Susie because Susie came to all my f shows. I think she's got to be one of the most respected journalists in fashion. You've been to a lot of fashion shows, right? But at all the time that you've been sitting up front line on all the fashion shows, what is the most uh, significant moment that you can remember or feeling you had at a fashion show? You know, there's so many of those special moments. That's what we call them, fashion moments, mm. don't we? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, uh, you know, mine go back a long way. Mine go back to Yves Saint Laurent and the Ballet Russe collection. I think, for me, one of the most important things is when there's two designers sort of playing off each other in style. So you got Asdina Lyre and Condé Garçon at the same time. So you've got one incredibly uh, glamorous and fitted clothes and body conscious and the other one very correct and austere. And then you got the Armani Versace playoff, which was mm. another big deal. Mm. You know, Armani was really quite sober and minimalist and Versace was totally over the top. And then in the Tom Ford era, you got the Gucci Prada payoff. And that's always very exciting because there's this sense of two designers really fighting with each other. So all those shows, therefore, become very significant. There's a discipline you get from doing fashion shows because there's a pressure on you twice a year to create a collection that means something. For me, uh, my, in particular my earlier shows, I made a big point of the theater of it. But because of my, pro because of my route was always traditional tailoring, I brought a formality to it as well. So let's talk a bit about Armani. What impact do you think Armani's had on menswear? Well, as, well, you know as well as I do that Armani is menswear, was menswear. He created the modern man in terms of how he looked. But, you know, I think much more about how he felt. I'm sure that there are many men who would say today that was the first time they ever felt comfortable when dressed up. In other words, Armani loosened it all up. He gave the cut, he gave the spirit, he gave the glamour, but he gave the ease of wearing. I mean, that's something that you understand so well because, right. you know, you are very much in the spirit of uh, Armani in that way. But I think there are many men who thank him, and you know, not just Tom Hanks and all the crowd he dresses in Hollywood, but it's significant that they will always, all those Hollywood guys will always come out for Armani because, you know, he made that laid back LA style glamorous by the way he cut the clothes. The suit was very dominated by an Italian structure. I knew that if I could, you know, I could show a different way to do this. I knew that I could inspire men to change their attitude towards the suit and go for something much more structured. Why? Because it's much more flattering to the form. I've seen Armani at work. I've seen Versace at work. I've seen Karl Lagerfeld at work. They do it all themselves, you know. Yes. Not all of it, of course, is not possible with what they produce. But, you know, if someone decides to change a shoulder, 
and then they work on it. They take the form and they actually work on it themselves. They don't just say to their minions, oh, do that shoulder for me. John Galliano with those amazing bias cut dresses. That's right. He doesn't just sit there in a dream on a sofa no, no, no. and say, I'd like a dress that flowed over somebody. You know, a really great designer does that initial stage and breaks the barrier of design or of manufacture or of cutting and of pattern making. They do it themselves. Armani totally revolutionized menswear. He understood something about the modern world, and I think that's with all designers. It's understanding the psyche of what's going on. It's not just making the frocks. She's right, she's right. Basically what, what, she, mean? what she means is, is that uh, the designer intuitively knows and feels what everyone else is feeling about. Um, it's like capturing the spirit of the moment in clothing tapping into a psyche, a uh, consciousness, and uh, expressing it, and also knowing how to present it. And that's what she means by that. Marnie actually doesn't even think about um, fashion. He's all about his own style. I, I mean, how do I define him? You know, how do we find Giorgio? How does he sit on the table of, 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 of great designers? He has to be, got to be one of the most significant. So, Oswald, this is, we're quite a long way from Savile Row. That's right, that's right, a long way from Savile Row. Well, not too far. It leads quite close to England. No, I'm excited to be here. I mean, you know, like I've said many times, you know, Giorgio Armani has kind of been uh, 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 a driving force in my life in terms of wanting to even get into men's clothing, men's design, and more importantly, inspired me to want to make a significant impact. To be in your 70s and still have the hunger that he has, there's not many creators that I know of who have that hunger. And I have met um, most of the most famous designers in the world, personally. But Armani is truly exceptional in this case. Something in the persona, something in the man, you feel he's still got so much more to give. It's kind of the, you know, achieving legend, you know? And Armani is definitely a legend. Oh, buongiorno. This is such a pleasure. Real, 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 real pleasure. Real, real pleasure. I'm so excited. Thank you. You like for you? I'm for you, I try, huh? <laughs> I gotta say, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm really excited because from when I was 16 years old, um, when I decided to become a designer, uh, I looked at all the most famous designers at that time in men's clothes, and you were the one who had made what I'd say the greatest impact in men's clothing. And so you inspired me to actually create and become a designer. So for me to be talking to you now is very exciting for me. So I've got loads of questions. Thanks. So Armani's famous for taking the structure out of suits. Whether that knowledge of creating that direction, which is going to revolutionize the business, where did that come from? I started out in an Italian industry that used American expertise and became part of this industry, aiming to give clothes a different personality. Each man is different, and I wanted the suit worn by one man to look different on somebody else. As a young man, colleagues regarded me with distrust because I wanted the jacket to look imperfect rather than perfect. This is fundamental. Women's and men's clothing then was very rigid looking, with lots of padding on the inside, taking away the feeling that under a jacket was a human body. It's risky mm -hmm. to change the whole concept. 
rischioso di cambiare tutto il concetto. But did he realize what he was creating was going to revolutionize menswear? 